trying to show you how I do my lips. <laughs> no one cares, but this is what I'm doing on the Eclipse. So I'm gonna wait for a few more of you to get on, then I'm gonna show you how I line my lips so that you see, so you can see, you don't have to fill them. Look, I have really, well, I think they're just whatever lips. You see that? Yeah, hi, I am gonna do that. But I'm gonna do my lips first so I can show you <laughs> because, you know, I didn't have a chance to put them on. I just got out of the shower. I was a filthy mess. I got my makeup bag, y'all, my makeup bag. Exactly, hi. No lips so that we can stop saying that I've got surgery or fillers or some bullshit like that. Hi, Canada, no bullshit like that. Happy birthday. Yeah, so I'm gonna show you how you do it so you don't have to do shit to your face. Like it's five seconds. Hi from South Africa, yeah, totally. Oh no, your fur baby died. Yikes. Thank you for that. I am live. I mean, I think I'm alive. Yeah, this. Ugh. Okay, so I just put whatever clothes didn't need to be washed. Okay, first of all, I got to tell you. Now, I know the report. That's bullshit. Anna Smith. That's, uh, that's a cool name. Anna Nicole Smith. Okay, first of all, Libra Lori gave me this at Christmas and I fucking love it. Look. Look, y'all, travel. Look at this. It's it, girl. Isn't this great? So I just throw this in my purse. Yeah, exactly. But that's not the lip part. Okay, I lost my dog the day after my birthday. Oh, no, no, no. And then I got this thing. This goes in my hiking knapsack. It's got six layers of shit to put on your face so you don't look like a troll. Um, yeah, hey, you guys. Yeah, exactly. Okay, here's how we line the lips. Okay, so get your lip liner. This one is like $5 by NYX. This is my, like, I've just been living out of my car, okay? This is my natural lips. Okay, look. This is it. I don't pump them. And I've always copied Lucille Ball from the 40s, right? So I start, okay, see the corner of your mouth? Go down. Don't go right in the corner. Go underneath in the middle. Then go back up. Can you see? Okay, just do that with a color that matches. I mean, you can do it with whatever. This is gonna run out, I didn't sharpen it. Maybe I have another one. Um, you can do it with whatever color you want. Of course me, I don't bring enough. Okay, so anyway, you do it like that. And then you don't go right to the corner, you go right there and you go up. Can you see? You don't need, you don't need to pump your fucking lips up, right? Since y'all say I do shit like that, not y'all, but whoever the hecklers are. The hecklers. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, I know. I, I get the taping. I can see, like I can see why you would tape. See? Anyway, not the point. Fuck them if they don't like your face, but I'm just showing you. So then you go like this, right? Okay, see? Then you take the lip liner there in the middle. Take it like that. Smack your lips together. Then, I mean, it depends how cheeky I'm feeling. Because, I mean, I have a darker lip liner too. Because it's the only other one in my purse. So I can go around with a little bit darker. Put it in the middle. Right? <laughs> Nothing sharpened. And then just like, you see the trouble? Look, <laughs> I'm as graceful as, I don't know what, not graceful. Okay, there. So anyway, I just, got, I just decided to do this. So see, you go all around the bottom and then I gotta use this. Anyway, then you go around the top. Do you see? Do 
there I wanted to show you guys see that's not pumped up fake lips that's lip liner see done and you can really smack it and make it go whatever there you go makeup bag I got this and I got this and a bunch of other shit I just see do you see it does right Nicole People go, oh, you have to do it. No, 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 no. That's actually, and don't go right in the corners. Go down so it like plumps it up. And smudge it a bit around, but make sure the colors match whatever they are. I know, MJ. Paige's little baby's so cute. Yeah, I know the trolls. They be saying that all the time. Um, but, you know, so I thought I'd show you. Like, those were my real lips. They're average. I mean... My lips were always big at the bottom, but they're average. No, you put your, you know what? Lipstick smears over you. Use a pencil. I was, I had some lip gloss on because I put my powder on my face, but put your foundation over your lips and then build it up. And this literally, I've been doing this since I was like 12 when I want to. In the 90s, I underlined my lips. So I made them smaller, like a cupid doll mouth. So each Decade, the lip trends change, right? So I've learned how to work with makeup to do that for me. Yeah, see? <laughs> play with your makeup. Yeah, wait, Mamalicious, play with your makeup, right? Mine are just small on top and bottom. So what, Ren? We've all got natural lips. Mine aren't exactly big. Just line your lips. I did mine small. All of my night, early, late 80s and 90s pictures I have bright red lipstick and tiny little bow lips because I took the liner on the inside and made them smaller and powdered the outside. So I have a little, little whatever mouth back then. That's what I did. And then you can put other lipstick colors on. There's one really good one that pops your lips. And I'm going to start talking about this. Hold on. That's not it. Um, there's one. Okay. You, the cat just came in, of course. There's one that's really good. I like Make um, MAC lipstick. I like burgundies and plums and like whatever, but let's find this one. Let's see. Nope, too peachy, hold on. We're throwing all, I'm gonna finish and I'm stopping this nonsense. But it's true, that's how you do it, right? Yeah, but I'm saying I put makeup on. You can put makeup on, that's not about not loving yourself. I love makeup, so I'm just showing you what you do. This one's really, really pink. This is um, Saint Germain, I think. Yeah, Saint Germain, totally. Anyway, you can do this. See? I mean, just blend. There, we did it. I know, the kitty, I know she thinks it's treats. She's more of a pig than I am. I love to eat. Like, we both eat. I know. That's St. Germain by MAC. Yes, Estelle's makeup is the best. I have a shit ton in here. I have her under eye cream that I use. Yeah, I there's a great under eye cream. And this I love. You want Hi from Guelph, Ontario. Guelph, uh, Ontario. Okay, my two favorite concealers are... Um, the bottom of my bag then I'm stopping I swear to god okay so this one no that's not it forget it I don't have them okay so oh there you go yeah Jaffra well Estelle run Estelle is the face of Jaffra and her grandmother was ja Estelle's granddaughter of Jaffra Cosmetics my little friend Estelle I call her my little friend my sexy bitch friend Estelle yeah you heard that if Jan is on here her daughter Jenna is the daughter of the founder of Jaffer Cosmetics. And her daughter, which is the granddaughter, is um, afraid. Wait, afraid is feisty. I, I don't think it's too pricey. I think it's pretty. Yes, Estelle does eye cream. Go look up Estelle's Instagram. She's a clothing designer. She does the makeup. Beautiful. She's really beautiful. Um, she's busy creating, creating stuff. Yes, did Dick Clark really use royal jelly? Probably. Mm. 
Ah, uh, Dick Clark was, was was living in Malibu. I did the house clearing for who the hell was it for? Took over Dick Clark Productions. I can't remember her name, how she was connected to him. But anyway, wait, am I a horrible person because I don't want to talk to my dead cousin special needs adult child, my dead cousin? No, you can do what you want. Thank you for that. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, we're going to talk Eclipse. I have to bring up one more beauty thing because I'm insane. Gel X Nails, my second set, I did them. I just like tried to do them. But anyway, these are them. Okay, so let's start. I remember Jaffa parties. Yeah, that's Estelle's company. Do you think we see our loved ones when we die? Well, that's kind of what I do, Karina. So yes, my son died. And so yes, I do. Uh, my stepson and my son. Yeah, I did these myself. I'm not saying they're the best at the cuticle. I'm learning. But I'm doing it myself. Like, I like beauty stuff. I would be a beauty person if I had more patience. But uh, the Gel X, Gel X is a type of nails. It's fantastic. You buy the Gel X, the extensions they call them, and you just really kind of, I mean, you do have to paint them. I can't do that. Um, okay, so I did a TikTok with the Eclipse stuff on first, y'all. I got to tell you, okay, so I saw Paige's baby. For those for those of you that saw the post with Paige's little baby, Kate and Jay, what is Paige and Nate? What a sweet little baby boy. I spent the day with her on Monday. What a sweet little baby rascal man. Yeah, so cute, that little baby, you know, and he was so sweet, and we cuddled, and we cuddled, well, they sleep, you know, so the little babies sleep, but he was so cute, and it was so fun, and yeah, I just did them. The beginning, I didn't have my lips on, then I painted them on, and no injections, this is just what you do. So, um, yeah, I love him. He's so cute, Jen. Such a cute little man. He's like two and a half months, and Paigey was so fun. I love Paigey, and I love seeing her. I just love seeing Paigey. And uh, she, it's just very nice. And the little guy is so sweet. He's a Mr. Suckleson. He's, he just suckles away on his bubba and takes little naps and then smiles when his dad comes home, when Nate comes home, big smile on his face. He recognizes the voices. It's really cute. And uh, they do recognize like their parents' voices. So, and there's two big dogs. And so he he knows that, I mean, there's, Paige has an ace and ace is a big Great Dane. And he's really big and he's so cute. So yeah, uh, do you think I'm saying, did he drown? No, they didn't say that, that Aaron drowned. Well, they said he drowned after they accused him of like huffing and taking pills. Okay, so yeah, I love the baby. There's nothing I did better than have a baby. Nothing else really matters to me than seeing little babies, you know, and, and being able to be included in their life. What else do you really have? Kelowna checking in. I know Kelowna well. Um, yeah, the Aaron Carter video. I watched another psychic um, or another medium, a TikTok medium, and she's saying the family contacted her and stuff. And I was like, you know what? Mm, I picked up on his energy before he died and then read the energy when you guys, I was coming home from Palm Springs hiking and y'all were texting me and, you know, doing that. I don't know what, I don't know what, Kenna's due date is. It was Jason's birthday, but I think they've moved it earlier. I haven't, I don't specifically know. She has another appointment. I have to ask her. I want to say she said July 11th, but I might be wrong on that. Sometime in July. I mean, I know it's going to be a cancer baby. This I know. Anyway, <laughs> you'll be a little cancer baby. Uh, but anyway, Aaron's energy, whenever I did the first video on him going back three years, I was able to pick up on the timeline of the energy, you know, with him, right? And then when he died, I don't care what they say was in his body because here's, they said there was a, uh, like a Xanax, but it wasn't that. It was some kind of anxiety medicine, like, um, oh God, I used to take them and I can't remember the name of it. Um, benzo, whatever, like a generic for that. And then he was huffing. So he had like uh, huffing spray in his body meaning he was huffing a substance, nitrous or whatever, whatever the chemical was, right? Well, here's the thing. 
if I'm going to give you Ativan, thank you. If I'm going to give you a sedative and you pass out, yeah, Carter was doing whippets. That's what they say. That's what they say. I know I did my lips. Look at the beginning and I lined them. They're not pumped in. I mean, they're lined. But if you if you drug somebody, you can put anything into their body, even with nitrous oxide, out of a out of a out of a pump, you know what I'm saying? Out of a balloon pump or whatever these people do. I mean, they can put face masks on you. That's what the kids used to do when my kids were in school. They used to do the whippets with fucking gas masks on their face. So I, I, I know that's a lot of work to go through, but I don't really understand why they're saying what they're saying unless they're trying to prove a point and I don't believe it I'm sorry I just don't feel like it's accurate it's fine to say it and it's fine that that's in his body that I don't dispute how did it get there why did it get there yeah dust it yeah there was a kid in uh it was a Jason or Keith's class that did the dust it mm -hmm. mm. but the dust it spray okay Oh, he might have been in his addictions, but that's not what I picked up. I think more that he was having other issues going on. And then he's in a bathtub. So here is what I'm going to say to you. And you can take it any which way you want. You are not in a fucking bathtub like Whitney Houston, like Bobby Christina, like Aaron Carter, like any other person who dies in a bathtub. You're not going to get high and go get in a bathtub. That many people in Hollywood. It just needs to stop. It doesn't feel right to me. So I texted on her TikTok. Nope, bullshit. Nuh-uh. Not buying it. Not the energy I picked up. Why are you going in the fucking bathtub? Oh, I'm going to go take a nice bath because I'm high. I, of course he was. It's such bullshit. I can't. I, I just. And I read the energy before he died. Okay. So three years before he died. And I picked it up. Like, I knew where he was headed. I knew what was going on. So, I don't believe, I don't believe he's going to get in the bath. I mean, I, I've been around a lot of fucking drug addicts. Fentanyl users seem to hang out in the shower. I'll say that much, but. Mm. Not the way that they're, oh my God, I'm slurping on this. Did my tea bag, I'm swap. Mm. Anyway. I think I swallowed the tag. <laughs> anyway, I just don't, I'm, I do not believe it. That's just me personally and what I feel up. I don't care what another psychic says, what another medium says. I don't care. I know I picked up on the energy before he died, three years before he died and laid out the timeline for his death, which means it was already in the ethers. And I think I said the path, whatever he, you know, basically I think I implied he'd be taken out so yeah of course he still had his clothes on in the tub because yeah we all do dust off but keep in mind if you're on Ativan or if they inject you with something like well okay like with Marilyn Monroe I get told to shut up every day when I was 10 I knew that Marilyn Monroe did not commit suicide I know that okay I know that I know that Marilyn Monroe did not commit suicide. So I said this as a little kid. I got mocked and laughed at. I can feel it. Now they're saying, of course she didn't. She didn't just swallow 50 pills. Oh, poor, poor, weak little drug addict swallowed a bunch of, fuck off with that. See, that's why you don't do, okay, Xanax, yeah. That's why you don't do drugs. That's why you don't drink, because they can use it against you. They will use it against you to kill you. Um, yeah, I did call it. I called it three years before, but, you know, whatever everybody else is picking up on, they're entitled to, but I disagree immensely. And I'm allowed to disagree, and they're allowed to say something different, so it doesn't fucking matter. But um, what about Eminem? I don't know much about Eminem. I did hear an interesting thing on Betty Davis, though. I did, and I was like, ooh, she's a fucking Aries, and I heard this. Okay, so Betty Davis... Her daughter wrote a tell-all book, as they always do, right? Tell-all books. When Betty Davis was alive and said that her mother was a high-level witch in Hollywood, was a Satanist. This book was written when Betty Davis was still alive. So I don't think Betty Davis lied until... Um, yeah, I knew Anna Nicole Smith. Anyway, um, and I told you that whole story. But I don't think that Betty Davis... Um, 
I don't think she was alive in the 2000s. I think she died in the 80s. And I don't have my phone because it's over here. But here's the thing. Um, here, your son's psychic. Uh, oh, by her friend Jack. That's interesting. Yeah, exactly. Here's the thing with, the, with Betty Davis. Her own daughter said she was a Satanist who would change faces and get demonic after she drank. For telling the truth a good 30 years ago. Yeah, because that's how they got popular. Hello. Yeah, Marilyn was MK. You can tell when they're MK Ultra. Absolutely. Do you ever get starstruck? I haven't. Hi, Ashley, my love. Hi, Ashley. No, I'm not starstruck. Um, I used to feel embarrassed of... Um, mm, I used to feel embarrassed of maybe the way that I lived, but that was years ago. Died in 89. Yeah, her daughter wrote the book while she was alive and said she was a fucking Satanist. <laughs> Hello, do we not say this? Like, that's what it is. That's how they get where they're going. And Aaron Carter was born into that family, okay? I haven't looked at anything on James. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you so much. MK Ultra mon Monarch Mind Control, which is why they tattoo. That's why that stupid Maroon 5 lead singer has a butterfly over his mouth. Like, that isn't too obvious. Oh, ugh. yeah, okay. Anyway, um, MK Ultra is how they use the mind control. But I just found it interesting. I never read Betty Davis's daughter's book, but I found it very interesting that the daughter described what we know to be true at this point in time. I love Metallica too. But, you know, um, it's interesting. And don't think they can't. They have things from the 50s where they can shoot something at you and stop your heart. I mean, they can do all kinds of things, okay? They do all kinds of things. So I don't know what to say. Anyway, I know Ashley is such a, a doll. Let's see, Doja Cat's, yeah, Doja Cat's new little demon tattoo. I mean, she's entitled to do it, but understand through the ink, the demon comes through. So um, heart attack gun. Yeah, they do that. Oh, fuck. Ashley knows what I'm talking about. Ashley knows what I'm talking about. Okay. She literally knows what I'm talking about. So, I mean, I don't know what to say, but yeah, the book came in 85. Her daughters called her a Satanist at that time. Yeah, literally. Um, exactly. So she looked dipped in blood with those crystals on her. Okay. I don't know who we're talking about. Yeah, I know. Ashley, I'm gonna tell Ashley, am I allowed to say the family you come from? Should I say it or should you, do you tell me? I'll wait to see if it comes up. Anyway, Ashley comes from an entertainment family. How about that? And yeah, anyhow, so she knows the shit and lived it when I met her and knows it. So Ashley has come out of everything. Yeah, Ashley, I'm going to talk, I'm telling Ashley's story. I'm not telling her story, but Ashley's sister is um, Whitney Cummings, who literally is the one that wrote um, Two Broke Girls. So that is Ashley's family. And when I met Ashley, she was having trouble getting out of a circumstance within the context of her family, but she fought it. And she, and she literally had to fight them. She literally had to fight them. Well, actually, it's her sister. She fought. Like, she had to fight for her freedom. And she fought. This is who Ashley is, okay? This is who she is. She fought. She fought. She fought. So, was the same actress? Uh, no, no. Uh, Betty Davis worked with Joan Crawford. And the woman in the movie, Mommy Dearest, is, uh, what's her name? Really pretty, Bonnie and Clyde, I can't think of her name, you know. Crazy temperament, really pretty woman, and I can't think of her name. Anyway, so I think Aaron Carter was still on Marshall's son. Yeah, they're all, they're all, they're all connected. Who's, is someone making fun of me or saying something? Let's see, fuck the Illuminati. Faye Dunaway, there you go, thank you. I was like, you know, the one that's really pretty, Bonnie and Clyde, but bad shit crazy, no offense, Faye Dunaway. Um, her reputation precedes her. But anyway, Ashley knows firsthand. Ashley climbed out of it with her own strength, gumption, and reprogrammed her own brain, by the way. So uh, bug-eyed Betty Davis, I know, right? Like, really? Anyway, so no, you did, Ashley. You did really good. 
You did really good. Of course she was. Her daughter says it. I can't spell me neither. Um, so we should be, is running, wait, is running, I, whoever this Monica is, fuck off, Monica. I'm just saying it. Uh, mm -hmm. Bug eyed Bezos. He's just got one bug eye. That means the clone. Uh, no, I was talking about Betty Davis. Our, Joan Crawford's daughter also wrote about her, but yeah, Ashley is my chosen sister as well. Me and Ashley are twinsies. <laughs> She's taller. She's a taller twinsy. <laughs> um, yeah, it's interesting. There's a there's a lot of it in the backgrounds of people that understand the ritualistic part of things. So a lot of us come from families with Masons or Illuminati or were adopted into them, like which was the case with mine. We're adopted from them into others in order to hide. There's all kinds of things. Um, there's many different kinds of things. But let's talk first about the eclipse tonight. Tonight at 9, 12 p.m. New moon at 29 degrees and 50 seconds of... Aries, which is the anoretic degree. I never say that right. Brooke, Brooke Shields survived too. And Brooke Shields' mother really, really, yeah, ha, whatever. Anyway, um, Monique, stop with your trolling bullshit. No one gives a flying fidget what you're saying. So we have a new moon in Aries, 29 degrees and 50 seconds. California time. It's a new moon on um, the 20th on the East Coast. It's 12, 12 a.m. on the East Coast. So anything in the 29th degree, anything in the 29th degree, right, focuses the energy and makes you deal with it crazy out of order because it's the last degree. It's the 29th degree. So you're not getting out of that energy until you deal with everything with that energy. Now, on top of it, we have a new moon. We have a lunar eclipse. Okay, we have a lunar eclipse and we have the sun going into Taurus tomorrow. And then the day after the sun goes into Taurus, we have Mercury retrograde at 15 degrees of Taurus. The new moon is in a wide conjunction to Jupiter, which isn't bad. It's expansive. It's okay. But it's also, no, I, you can't manifest during an eclipse. So you can do whatever you want, but I wouldn't. We also have a huge square to Pluto with the new moon. And Pluto will rock your world up in a way you never thought. Like it'll throw you upside down, beat your ass, throw you against the wall like spaghetti. See if you stick. If you don't stick, get up and haul your ass at the wall again. So when we're talking about this energy, it's about emotionally releasing old behavior patterns that no longer work in your emotional life. And when it comes to a new moon in Aries at 29 degrees, you best be sure that's some volatile shit. Volatile. Volatile. Here's why you don't manifest during an eclipse. I know people will manifest during an eclipse, but understand, eclipse energy spreads the energy sideways. So instead of throwing a dart at the wall where you know where your manifestation is going, the energy of an eclipse opens up different portals around the world and in the atmosphere. So we don't know where they are unless you're very aware of, you know, should we exercise? I always exercise. Anyway, uh, nothing will stop me from that or eating or drinking coffee. Sorry, a true story. Okay, so portals open up and then there are earthbound souls, entities, aliens, demons, whatever you want to call them, okay, non-humans that travel between dimensions during an eclipse and can pull your energy with them. So when you manifest and you are in a heightened state, which means actually you're out of your physical body when you manifest, when you manifest and you're out of the physical body focused on this, you can have your energy pulled in a different direction with anybody crossing through and around because the energy opens up and it, it raises and lowers the vibration, okay? So, well, don't manifest five, three, five days before, five days after. Just don't manifest. Like, don't focus literally on manifesting. Live your life, you know, live your life, but don't, don't manifest per se. Like, don't sit there and go, I want a new car right now, right now, because the energy 
will move sideways. It's not overtly obvious. We are also going into a retrograde in Taurus when the sun will be in Taurus while the eclipses are happening, while we have Uranus in Taurus. So we already have an erratic energy frequency. So the radio is staticky, okay? So when you have static during an eclipse, you aren't going to be able to control what you manifest. So no, anything retrograde, anything retrograde means to go backwards. As Saturn return is when Saturn returns to its natal or birth position in your chart, usually 28 and a half years to 30 years by degree. So I'm in my second Saturn return, but it's because Saturn just went into Pisces. So it's not going to happen until about 2020, the end of 2024, 25, literally by degree for me. I'm a later degree, but it, you just, when you sideways, yeah, no, it goes sideways. You're trying to go forward and it's going sideways. Think all of y'all on the East coast, think about driving in a snowstorm when you do that, when you kind of skid off like that and you can't pull your, your hydroplane, you can't pull yourself back. That's what happens when we're talking about eclipse energy. Yeah, well, because it's every 30 years. So if you live to be 90, you'll have had three Saturn returns. Yeah, it's about two and a half years in each sign. So you'll go through for that, your Saturn returns. The eclipse, yeah, the eclipses are like Moldavite. I told you, this. I wear Moldavite and I wore this little Moldavite the Christmas before Keith died. And then my life just blew the fuck up with the Moldavite. Doesn't stop me from wearing it, but literally spun my, just spun shit out of control. So yeah, I know, but when you, when you really, when you really manifest, you want your energy and power. You don't want it hijacked by things going by because because the energy frequency right now is them trying to block themselves from being removed from this dimension so there's always a problem with that you want to make sure you don't yeah <laughs> drive by exactly uh exactly so you need you have your mold divide on a shelf oh my god my mold divide messed things up doesn't stop me. It wasn't this one. It was this one. This little one. I bought one for me and Lila. Thank God Lila didn't put it on. But uh, I bought one and it was, wow. No, you don't do anything crazy in a Saturn return. Your Saturn return is your karma. So you reap as you shall sow. That's the theory. So whatever you're doing up until your first Saturn return, okay, whatever you're doing, will come back to you. So if you're drugging and drinking, you may overdose and die. That happens during that time. For me in my Saturn return, I gave birth to Keith and his brother died. So that's what happened. Of course we have trolls. Why wouldn't we have trolls? It's an eclipse. That's what it is. Uh-huh. Mm. Eclipse energy is like lightning. Lightning comes out of nowhere and zaps your ass. So, yeah, and if you if you live to be 60, then I'm almost 60. Well, I will be by the time my Saturn return comes. And then, depending on your degree, you can have early degrees in your Saturn in Pisces. Well, then you're either Keith Sage or my age, Shelly, or maybe you're older, too. You can be 90. Um, so, the Saturn return brings about... the. Thank you for that. It brings about the repercussions of your actions by removing that which isn't necessary. So when things are not necessary in your life, let's say you're a drug addict and you've overdosed, 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 during your Saturn return, you may actually end up dying because you have not acquiesced to the idea that you don't need to do that anymore. So, you know, but I, I tend to find Pluto and Uranus being the culprits for drug overdoses a lot. But yeah, your Saturn return is you reap as you shall sow. Also, when Saturn, when Saturn, I'm, she's, yeah, I'll be 56 turning 57. That is my age. 56, August 66. And I don't even care. And no, I haven't touched my face. We already went through that. People love to say shit. See, here's the problem with plastic surgery. 
The problem with plastic surgery is it's great when you want to put your boobs up here, but the problem with people's faces in plastic surgery, here's the problem. If you happen to be born with an okay face, nobody's going to believe you because we got the Kardashians running around saying they never touched their face. Kylie, come on now. Come on, Kylie. Chop, chop. Tell the truth, Kylie. <laughs> Tell the truth. Anyway, um... Yeah, well, no, I just, you're, you're born, you look like your family, okay? You look, I look like my mother. I can't help it. That's who I look like. So we all are replicas of our DNA and we're judged for it as if that's wrong. Well, you'd have to kill our parents for that to be wrong. You know what I mean? Oh my God, Kylie's so full of shit yet. I just... Whatever, the face of her before she looks like she does, she had like a totally different nose and face. Like it's obvious. Obvious. Mm. Obvious. Even better salt. Yeah, I know. Trolls are weirdos. But um, my mom looks exactly like me. She was. My mom literally, my mom died. She was 59. Birth mom. Um... Yeah, I got plastic surgery. It's right here on my boobs. I didn't say I didn't get a boob job. Here they are, y'all. The boob job. One, two. 23 years ago, I got a boob job. So sue me. But I haven't touched my face. That's where I draw the line, my face. You know why I draw the line? A, I'm afraid of Botox. It's botulism. And I have a phobia of... <laughs> Ashley will understand this. Ashley, <laughs> I have a phobia... <laughs> of being poisoned by food. So I cannot put Botox in my face because of that like OCD problem I have. <laughs> and I have silicone, I have silicone. I wanted silicone. So, you know, let's see that. I know the neckline, I know what you're saying. I've got that too. And then the, this stays all white here and then this gets all from the sun. So I'm a turtleneck person now, whatever. We're turtle glass, turtlenecks and sunglasses. No one cares. Um, yeah, Bobby, if you're here, got my implants replaced last year. Yeah, you have to continue to keep them up. But I'm still, uh, yeah, let's see, Whitney, yes. No, Ashley, Ashley is with God and Ashley is as pure as they get. And she crawled her ass out of her own life hell. And she has done nothing, nothing but elevate herself. And she's as kind as kind can be. So there's that. Um, yeah, you can be born into families. I mean, there are... Charles Manson had a kid. Do you think his kid is exactly, you know, like Charles Manson? No. Not everybody in a family is good. You can have a family of, like, s terrible thieves in the neighborhood. And Ashley... Oh, oh, Monique's... Yeah, now I see what you're doing. When this bitch comes by again, um, I hope you remember me. Oh my God, I, I, I can't remember you because it went by too quick. <laughs> um, I look way better than both my parents. Well, you're still their gene pool though. Um, it was so funny. I, I was looking through family pictures and, oh, you reported Monique. Thank you. I can't catch her. Hi from London. Hi, Andrea. But, but we look like... Jason looks like John, but looked like me when he was little. And Keith looks like John's mom, but looked like me too. So it's weird. It's, it skips. Like, it skips through family genes. And it's the angle of the face and the stuff and your combination of your family. You may look more like this one or more like this side. And then people claim them. You know, whatever. Right? I look like my great-grandfather. It skips genes. Yeah. Yeah, they are. I know. Trolls are funny. Got to tell you something. So, yeah, Keithy and I had the same teeth and the same smile. Jason and I got the same little eyes and the same nose. I feel. But they both got part of their dad's face, too. And Keith had hit John's mom's face, like Grandma Kay's face. So he had a little bit of her face. Like, I saw John's side of the family. I saw John's mom's side of the family, actually. So, yeah, Bobby, please tell Sloan about Allie Carter. She's missing. Bobby will tell me. I don't even know, but I've been away. Um, people are saying I look like Demi Moore. You probably look better than that. You look like yourself. 
Uh, is this Monica right here? Okay, let's see. Uh, put user in timeout there. I put Monica in timeout. I don't know if that's the right Monica, but she's gone. <laughs> yeah, I put her in timeout. Um, so, anyway, uh, let's see. Blocked reported. Yeah, I know they got mental problems. <laughs> I don't know what to say. So, anyway, John and I settled our divorce finally. Yeah. So, I have a big work project. That is where I've been. Big, huge work, work project cleaning out a business that we own and doing that. So my friend Johnny and I have been doing that. Johnny really does most of it. Johnny that helped me put the um, floors in and helped me redo the house. Anyway, uh, as punishment for John this weekend, just for being a pain in my ass, I decided to wake his ass up at 2.30 in the morning and throw him in the car and drive him to Palm Springs in the middle of the night and he took a little nap on the in the car while I went hiking because I had to get the pictures of the flowers when the sun hit. So I had to get, thank you for that. I had to get the, um, the beautiful flowers in bloom because they'll be gone in like two weeks. And it was Coachella, so all those people were all over the fucking place. So then, um, yeah, then we drove from Palm Springs. So I got down about 8.30. We drove from Prom Springs and we went to Joshua Tree where I threw him out of the car because it's he, he couldn't climb up the Palm Springs when it's really, really steep. And he is 77. But we went to, um, uh, I know Coachella, the traffic. It's on again this weekend. Help. Anyway, we went, um, Sloan's cat is so weird and ugly. It won't even let her touch it must. I don't, Matthew, I don't know what's wrong with you. And don't call Tallulah ugly. She's a beautiful cat that Paige's aunt Diane sent me. And Paige told me to get. And then Diane passed over. And it actually marks the year anniversary tomorrow of Tallulah's mom. Not cat mom, human mom. Diane passing. So we don't talk about my kitty as being ugly. She's so cute. Um, so cute. She's so cute. And we cuddle even though I get itchy and she makes me sneeze. <laughs> um, but anyway, John and I, then we went from Palm Springs. We drove 40 minutes over to Joshua Tree. And in jo the, oh, I've never been to Joshua Tree except when I did the flight and fire. And I was staying in a hotel next to Joshua Tree. So that's how I went into the park. So I wanted to show John because there's like Skull Rock and all these big, beautiful, amazing portal rocks. And somebody messaged me and they're like, is Joshua Tree a portal to hell? And I couldn't stop laughing because in the summer it must feel like that. 120 degrees, whatever. Absolutely gorgeous mountain and snow on the top of the mountains. Beautiful. Anyway, we got out, we did that. And then we got home and me and Johnny, not to be confused with John, me and Johnny and John went to the work building, the commercial building, and we started clearing it. And Johnny has been taking trailer loads to the dump. Oh, my God. Then we're going to knock out the walls. We're going to do everything and build the production studio. But I'm doing it piece by piece by piece. Well, no, we didn't sell anything. The arrangement, you're going to love the arrangement. The arrangement is John can stay in the house till he passes or I pass. And the building is being redone by me. And at the time of death, we split it. And it's, what do you call that? Joint, um, joint custody, joint, joint ownership. So it's right of survivorship. And that's it. I don't know what to call it. But if you sell it now, you know, whatever. I think I can make it run as a secondary business. So yeah. Anyway, that's what we did. So he stays. I left the marriage with nothing and haven't gotten anything since I left. So it was all through my own effort by the skin of my pants because now I took nothing and had nothing. Um, so joint tenants. Thank you. So that's what we did. I just agreed to let him stay there until he until he wants to not stay there or passes away or I die or whatever. Then you do what he wants. And that's the way it should be. 
Yes, 800 a month once he stops working. I agreed to it. It's not court ordered. I just agreed to it. Mm -hmm. Soul right of survivorship. Yes, joint tenancy with soul right. Thank you. Yeah. And so I said, I will pay him 800 a month. I'm also paying the car insurance and the phone bill and all that shit. So we're going to put up an aerial, me and Johnny. But first, we're, we're going to frame the building. It's about 2,000 square feet. So we're going to frame it into three separate rooms. And one's going to be an aerial room. And then a photography for bands and stuff like that. And then like three different themed rooms, if you will. And then production. Why? Because it's a great warehouse and I can make a business of it. <laughs> I can make, what about Jason? Well, I guess he remains there, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. So yeah, four years. So I'm sure they're going to find their own house. They can't be living in my house, but whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, it's going to be for photo shoots and you rent it out. So it's, it's a nice, it's a warehouse. It's a nice, because I agreed to, because he asked, because I can't pay another 50000 to continue fighting in court. That's why. <laughs> okay. I gave up. Because it's a waste of money to keep going to court. It's a waste of fucking money. You don't get anything done. The other side just says, I'm not going to respond, and you're fucked. If they don't respond, you're fucked, right? You keep paying. So I'm like, all right, I'll pay. Whatever. He feels I owe him, so I'll do that. Because he's older. I mean, technically, if you're older, you should have more money and you should fucking take care of your younger wife. <laughs> technically. Um, yeah, it's cost me $50,000 in legal fees. It's ridiculous. And I'm not going to fight anybody anymore. I just didn't want to fight anybody else if one of us passes us away and it goes into probate, which is, would have gone into probate because I what? But if... I, even if I owe him nothing, Kristen, I have to fight in court to get a judge to agree to that, which is going to cost me fucking more. You know what I'm saying? Yep, exactly. Well, I'm always the bitch that pays for men, so I'm the man. I get it. I get what I'm here for, but it doesn't matter. I'm still not married, so I'm free. Don't be sorry. It's good. It's good. It's free. His daughter, that bitch, should help take care of him, but she's too much of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh god um no the attorneys win why would you continue to do that and my attorney was nice this new attorney was nice but he has to keep filing paperwork to get the other side to respond and if the other i don't want another man <laughs> no 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 man shall come near me again that's it for me for life it's fine it doesn't fucking matter um yeah no i take john with me doesn't matter. Uh, California divorce laws do not matter because you have to go to court. In order to get a person, John was not gay apparently. I don't know if he's gay or not. <laughs> I just accused him of that the other day. But you had, and that was a joke actually, but was it? I don't know. Anyway, you have to pay a lawyer to go into court to do it, which means every time they do paperwork, you're up $5,000 in a month. And if the other person doesn't answer the paperwork to force the issue in court, you have to pay like five, ten thousand dollars every single time, like two thousand, five thousand, and you have to have a court case. And if they don't do it, they'll ask for more time, and it keeps costing you money. I couldn't handle it anymore. I have no more money for that. So um, imagine if there were laws around being gay. <laughs> yeah, John's daughter did. John's daughter did marry a gay man. Yes, she did. She made that deal, which, yeah, she did. I mean, I'm sorry. I knew the, the ex-boyfriend. Maybe he's bisexual. Since we're going with everybody doing everything they want. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, she should be paying for her dad. That's exactly right. But I bet you she won't. And I get in trouble every time I fucking mention her name on here because she cries. <laughs> I don't fucking care. Um, anyway, yeah, she's a beard. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, be somebody's cougar. I don't need a man, y'all. Um, yeah, I don't. I just didn't want to go. Of course, they purposely. Of, of course, he wanted what he wanted. So I gave him what he wanted. I don't fucking care. 
I'm not married. I'm free. Legally, the paperwork's done. You don't have any ownership over me. I'm free. You may take money, my work, my time, but I'm free. So I win. I'm free. I'm my own person. You don't get to fuck with me anymore. <laughs> he wanted me to pay for his attorney. That's what he wanted. I don't know how we paid for his attorney. I could barely pay for mine. Uh, <laughs> remember, strippers always end up paying for their men. So ladies, ladies, if you go into the sex work industry, remember, you come from a background where you are used, <laughs> if not sexually, if not for your money. Ashley, you know what I'm saying. You come from this background Men will take advantage of you. They will lie to you. They will take money from you. They will do whatever it is. And the only way you can win in court is if you had ad nauseum money to keep paying your lawyer to keep bugging the other side to respond. And actually, in John's defense, we sent a deal two weeks ago to his lawyer, which I gave to John in his hand, the paperwork, and he agreed to it. And his lawyer called and he's responded she she called this morning or she messaged this morning and said I'm gonna call in 15 minutes she still hadn't called as of like 2 30 p.m tonight to discuss the deal she's holding it off so John and I signed it and I sent it to my lawyer because you know what I'm not signing it in a retrograde that's what's not happening so that's what happened anyway uh did you get no, I'm not changing my last name. I like the last name, Bella, and it's annoying to the rest of his family. So I'm going to keep the last name because Keith is Keith Bella and Jason is Jason Bella. So that is my last name. I married it for 36 years. I get to keep it. John's mom never changed her name either. She divorced when he was three and she kept Bella and she had other boyfriends and she kept Bella. Bella, Bella, Bella. And I'm with her on that. I'm not giving up a good name that I married. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not. I did. I'm not giving it up. And my kids are Bellas. Like, that's what they are. I'm not. Neither did his mother. So, yeah, fuck that. It's Austrian in the family. They were Austrian. But I'm literally keeping the name. That's how I know. I did pay for it. I spent, this is year 36 today. Um, yeah. And it's my real last name. And Sloan Bella. And I have no middle name. So, it's that. Yeah. Yeah, your doggy's name is Bella, right? My married name is Jewel. I like that too. I like that. I kept my name too. Had a Yeah, I'm not going to change my name. Professionally, I'm known. Why should I change my name? I should have never changed my name to begin with, you know, if I wasn't going to. Like my first marriage, I hyphenated my name because, you know, that's ridiculous. But anyway, why do why do you change your name? You shouldn't change your name. You should And here's what I'm going to say. Oh my god, I never realized this. But yeah, Keith Isabella, I'm not changing, I'm, what am I going to be? Sloan Smith? Like what, what other name am I going to make up? Anyway, when you, um, I just saw Gel X, Gel X y'all. I'm learning how to do it. I'm saving money right here. Um, I feel so guilty. Don't feel guilty. Yeah, some people don't. Let's see, my first husband's last name went bye-bye. Yeah, some people like that, but this is year 36, and it's really, as an adult, my only maid, I'm, I don't give out my maid name. It's my only name because the birth family doesn't want to, <laughs> doesn't, no, no. Um, it embarrasses them, so I don't do that. Bobby knows all my stuff, but uh, yeah, we don't want to cause those people trauma, cause enough trauma over here. But yeah, no, I'm free. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you made me do. But I can. I gave in. I gave him everything. Of course, if he were to die for, if he were to die first, I would inherit that. But I could get killed next weekend. You know, falling off a cliff. For all anybody knows. Mm hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Um. But here's what I was gonna say. I was told by my lawyer. You cannot go ahead with any of your stuff on paperwork until the court agrees to your divorce. So once you're married, right? Once you're married, you have to, like, it's a, it's a government thing, which we know. So never get married. And you shouldn't even have to register domestic partnership. Why are these people in everybody's fucking business? 
Tina Turner should keep her fucking name. That's who she is. <laughs> I'm sure. Fuck off, Matthew, with your comments. Matthew, stop it. Get off the meth. Get off the meth. Um, so <laughs> it's the government that wins. And you can say whatever kind of laws that you want. You can say like California is 50-50, but you have to get into court and you're not getting into court without paperwork and you're not getting into court without paperwork that requires you to spend thousands of dollars, if not 10, 15 to 20 thousand dollars just to get in court. So you're better off to acquiesce, eat shit and go about your business. Now you can, as I did, bifurcate the marriage, which means on paper, <laughs> Matthew might be John. <laughs> exactly. You can, um, you can bifurcate, um, bifurcate the marriage, right? Because nobody can hold you in a legally bound marriage. Like I might want to get married again. So after you file for six months, you get your mar your divorce. Like I, I forced that issue, but I still, oh yeah, Matthew might be John's daughter. Yeah, could be. She's such a douche. She likes to pretend she's a man too. <laughs> she probably wears a strap on, stupid bitch. Anyway, um, allegedly. Okay, so anyhow, you, you can bifurcate a marriage. You can bifurcate a marriage within six months because they can't hold you hostage. You can marry someone else, but it was a, the division of assets. So there you go. <laughs> Fuck on Matt and everyone else. Exactly. <laughs> no strap on. <laughs> yeah, okay. But you know what I'm saying? Like, here's the problem. If you're a man and or a woman, possibly, and you have somebody younger coming into your life and you don't defend them in the beginning, they're going to hold resentment towards you, even if they love you. Like, they won't forget it. No woman's going to forget that shit, that you didn't stick up for them. No one's going to, nobody's going to forget that. You don't forget it. And it builds up. And when you continue to not stick up because you're a coward or whatever, and you don't want to speak up in front of your partner, then there's a problem. And that causes resentment. So when you do that, your inability to communicate or because you're passive aggressive or because you secretly enjoy your partner being fucking blasted by family members. Uh, yeah, I know. I hated being married too. I, I don't mind John. I mean, when we're not fighting, but that's what happens. And I don't forget anything. You know, John always says, oh, you got a good memory. I'm like, yeah, I was known for my memory when I was a kid. I have a photographic memory. I, I forget names though on the spot. Like I forgot Faye Dunaway's name. But yeah, they don't respect you. No, they don't respect you. No, I was never respected or I wouldn't be paying. A, a decent person would not agree to take money from his wife after their son died, after she had to go out. Regardless, I haven't asked him for shit. I just agreed to what he wanted and made it happen. I didn't ask for anything and I didn't leave with anything. And... I got flack for leaving with the kitchen table, which is where this camera is put on. I got flack for that, and I had to hear about it. But yeah, it's a bunch of bullshit. They love to blame me, but I haven't taken anything. No, I don't mind hanging out with them now. I don't mind it. It keeps other men away. It's fine. Um, <laughs> it's good. As long as no other men hear me, men, don't fucking come near me. Uh, yeah, I mean, nah. They're, no, no. Nah. But uh, sounds like... A mommy boy, that's why. Wait, no, sounds like a mommy's. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. It's not your fault. He didn't. I know it's not my fault. He was also a drug addict and an alcoholic. It's definitely not my fault. It's my fault I stayed, though. But I wasn't going to leave my kids. That's just the reality of it. I can't help if that hurts everybody's feet. That does not mean I don't love a person. It just means that as a woman, I couldn't fight him in the marriage because he would have done this shit to me in the marriage. I didn't have my wits about me. I was too busy having nervous breakdowns. So um, there's that. But anyway, it doesn't matter. LGBT love you. That's good. LGBTQ love me? Or do you hate men now? I pretty much always hated men. I don't hate every man, but yeah, I was a stripper. I mean, I, I don't know. Ladies who are strippers, what do you think of the male population? We see them at their worst. And when you're 14 and you see men in strip clubs and you see what they do, it really sets you up 
for failure because you see the you see what they do, right? And so you know you can't trust them because all these men in the strip clubs, they got their rings on, they're fucking and sucking guys out in the parking lot for cocaine and this and that and the other. Yeah, they're watching porn, they're doing all kinds of things. Oh, Lyle, that's good. I'm glad. Yeah, so that's just the reality of growing up in the sex industry. Yep, just saying. Uh, that's why I won't leave. Yeah, no, that's why a lot of people don't, <laughs> don't leave. Uh, I've never met any that aren't like that, but if you say they're not, I'll take your word for it. I've never met a decent man in my life who is morally correct and doesn't cheat. Now, John will tell you he doesn't cheat, but if you're in love with an alcohol bottle and you take pills, you're cheating on your family as well. I have never, ever met a man that does what he says, implements what he does, isn't a control freak. If he gives you money, doesn't have an expectation, oh, they'll give you money and shit, but mm -mm. yeah, sorry, but I clean my energy. Yeah, Brittany, it's very hard to clean your energy, but Brittany, you know what I'm talking about. Brittany knows what I'm talking about. She knows. She knows what goes on. That is what goes on. Yeah. I, I'm not saying there aren't good men. <laughs> I haven't met one. They're drunk. They do drugs. They're in the closet. They beat their women. They rape children. This is just all I saw. This is just what I think. So I'm glad you do. I just haven't met them. People ask me. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what, I just, I do not know what to say, but I mean, they're not all like complete. Oh my God. Okay. So I'm at the U-Haul, U-Haul place, right? And the little girl there. So I come in because I got to get a receipt because I keep switching. I'm sure there are, stop hanging out with the crowd. I'm telling you, I grew up in a very wealthy family. I went to a private school. I still haven't met a man that fucking keeps his word. Okay. And isn't an addict. I'm just saying that. Men in business suits, very wealthy men, very well-connected men, poor men, working class men. When they're in their 70s, they're going to be nice to you because they're scared of dying. I don't need that. Like, no. They're scared of dying. So when they're older, they come crawling back after they tortured another woman at some other point. I know wealth means nothing. What I'm saying to you is I've been with money, blue collar, not blue collar, all of that, all right? But when they get older, oh, they'll tell you I'm faithful. Mm. Yeah, okay. That's because you're scared to die and you're a baby and you want someone to take care of you and feed you because you're a pussy ass bitch. Not if you're married, not if Jesus is helping me to be a better man. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to, you know, it's just better if I'm not dating. Like, I don't need to. I had my kids. I'm over 50. I could spend the next 40 years. And people, people won't fucking believe me. They're like, you need a partner. I can do everything myself. I do everything myself. I was in a marriage where I did everything myself. I don't need you. So if I want to be around you, then that's a choice. But yeah, there are bad men and bad women. Oh, there's definitely bad women too. Absolutely. 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 I know they don't want to die alone. I can't wait to die to get off this planet. Seriously. If I die alone or in a crowd, maybe I'm on an airplane. Who knows? I don't actually want to die on an airplane. <laughs> yeah, you need a, exactly. I need a handyman and I don't need to sleep with one. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, a single married chick. Well, it's true. When you, when you are married to somebody who's more interested in bars and alcohol and more interested in hanging around bars and alcohol, you're alone. If you're married to a drug addict, you're alone. Period. You're, that's what you, <laughs> the vibrator. Yeah. I didn't say I'm not going to have sex with myself. What I said is I'm not... I don't, which worse, women or men? Well, I'm a woman. Some women are fucking bitches, though, too. Just fucking bitches. So, um, you know, they are. So there's some nasty-ass women. There's women that marry gay men and pop out kids and then take them for $8 million after nine years of marriage and then cry that they don't. I mean, yeah. 
bullshit. Yeah, workaholic, same thing. So you were a single woman, right? My ex was a compulsive gambler. Gambler. Yeah, they think it's okay for them to do what they want to do. But as a woman who has children, we're not going to leave. Most of us don't leave. You couldn't make me leave my children. You could make me hide in the closet from them, but you couldn't make me leave them. So I would stay with my children and put up with that shit until I left. And when I left, it flipped all of them out. Women can be very ruthless. I don't care to participate in any of that. <laughs> George was married to B, locked him out in a blizzard. That's terrible. I left my, yeah, see, you're good. I couldn't fight, Gypsy. I had no money to fight. And you can see how long I would have been fighting and the money it would take me to fight this man when I was 20 years younger and didn't have any money and barely had money when I left. So, yeah. I can see dating a boyfriend in jail because you're not around them. So you can say, I have a boyfriend, which keeps you safe from everybody. You can take him some cookies on the weekend and visit, but you don't have to be around them. So that's a plus, except for the jail fact, depending on what he did to get in jail. Um, yeah, it's hard to leave after kids. It's hard to leave after kids. That's the reality of it. The reality. So, and some lawyers are really bad. Is your Lilith in Aries? No, it's not. My, just... And just listen, just listen when you're young and you come from a family that pushes you into the sex industry because of abuse, meaning it's a reaction to your childhood abuse and you run away. What man do you think you're going to pick? Like, what do you know in your brain when you're 14, 15, 16, and you've run away from home? What man, what are your standards? Because you're living in shame and guilt from your family that abused you. I'm a triple Leo. Everything is in the 12th. Everything is in the 12th. <laughs> but what man are you going to pick? A decent one? You're not going to pick a decent one. Even if your family pretends to be decent, you're not going to pick a decent one. You're going to pick an addict of some kind because you come from perversion and addiction is perversion. So that's who molests children is addicts. I mean, let's just be really honest about, look, I'm on a tangent again. 29 degrees. Mm. Anyway, um, you have to deprogram your nervous system. You absolutely do. But people who are addicted care only about their addiction. And once you cross that boundary, and let's say you suck dick for cocaine and you're a man. Sorry to be graphic, but let's say you do that. And you watch porn with a guy so you can get more drugs. Do you think that you're going to stop from molesting somebody? You're not because you're a drug addict. You don't have to do that, but drug addicts and alcoholics are the ones in the families who are fucking up their children. It's usually not sober people. It can be church people, but they also have hidden closeted addictions. That's just the reality. So, oh, triple cancer. Interesting. You're a triple cancer. It's, but it is, it is the addiction that allows their defenses to get down and the demons to get in their head. Don't care what you think about that. That's a thing. That's why I say don't manifest during an eclipse because the demons are going between dimensions through portals and trying to free themselves and flee from their responsibility. That's when they're taken off the planet. So this is when this happens. Um, so that's what happens. It's not sober, sane, respectful, moral people, raping, abusing, diddling kids. Oh, I was drunk. I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I was sober. I do remember. So that's who's doing that. So if you're in a strip club and you're looking at a man, he's already in a fucking strip club and you marry him. I'm sorry. That's the reality. I mean, it is karma. You can have karma. Um, can they have all, yeah. And if a man wants you to be his mother, he doesn't want to fuck you. So he either hates women or he likes men or I know. I'm sorry. It's a true story though. I mean, I don't know why people don't want to see it. Why do we make excuses for reality? Never in a house with a normal person who understands abuse are you going to see somebody, a woman, allow a man to abuse her children. But when you add drugs and alcohol and the fact that women marry men to take care of their children or to have, I remember everything. Oh my God. I say that H O L D. I remember fucking everything, everything. And they call me all the time. Oh, that's not true. I'm like, 
I don't forget shit. And I actually write shit down. And if you say it to me again, I will fucking tape it. So don't say it. I will tape it. But if you're sober and you're in your right mind, if you have a predilection towards some kind of sexual perversion towards children, you're probably not going to act on it because you haven't let your guard down and you definitely know that that's wrong. If you're in a bar with a bunch of men watching a bunch of naked women and porn and shit like that, doing cocaine, and some guy says, suck my dick, I'll buy you more cocaine. These people do it. These people do it. Then they have guilt and shame, and then they drink and gamble and do drugs more, and then they torture their children, wives, and relatives. This is what, you have the same memory, moon and cancer. Yes, I have Venus and Jupiter in cancer. Venus, Mars, and Jupiter conjuncting cancer. So that's what happens. It's not sober people. It's women, by the way, who marry gay men. Now, you know what I'm talking about. Who the gay men like younger boys and then produce kids with them and then let other weird men in the industry around their kids and sit back and ignore it because they can have the lifestyle they want. So are you a female prostitute for money through your husband to let that happen? This shit happens all the time. Um... This shit happens. Yeah, but it happens. That's, that's, it. no, but it's the reality. Why do you think people end up in the sex industry? This is what I used to hear from men. Oh, some women like sex. Nobody wants to fuck 500 men for money. Okay, nobody. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say that. Yeah, I am speaking for people. Nobody wants 500 different dicks in their coochie. Having said that, if you're making money at it, someone taught you Will Smith is gay. Someone taught you to accept gifts from having sex. And that comes from your childhood. Whether it be an uncle, whether it be an aunt, whether it be a boyfriend, a school teacher, some soccer player you let... Ladies with children, don't let strange fucking men watch your kids when they're, when they're you know, little. So we have to understand that as a society. The more children that end up prostituting, stripping, all of these things, they're coming from childhood sexual abuse. Now, strippers are coming from places where there's voyeurism and it's not so much maybe like hands-on, but it's comments and degrading. Prostitutes are being raped in their childhood and going out into the industry. This is a fact. So who is doing that? It's men doing it. And by the way, who the fuck wants... <laughs> Here I am on a rant. I'm fucking cracking myself up. Sorry, you guys. Who in our society, of course they were sexually abused. Sex workers are. I keep trying to tell people that. I was one. I know it. Okay, I worked with them. You're not going to go do that. And we're easily manipulated when we're younger because we are traumatized in childhood by alcoholic addicted people who choose not to parent because they'd rather do drugs and act like tune out and delusional and don't be so stupid. Good God. Like I, I can't, you know, so what are you going to do when you grow up in a strip club or you fuck men on the street, you're a prostitute. I have some clients, many clients that do this and they marry a guy. Do you think their choice in a man is good? I bet you it isn't. I bet you the, they can love the man. You can love the man, but mm, your choices aren't good. So, yeah. Fun yes, functional alcohol. So did I. I had functional, alcoholic, wealthy father. But alcoholism is still alcoholism. Nobody wants to be around that. Do you want to be around it? Are people allowed to show up at work shit-faced drunk? Like, can you do that? No. So why do you think you should raise your children that way? I don't, and it's men. It is men. There's some bad women too, though. They allow the men to abuse their children and turn a blind eye so they can keep an income. Um, the men in the transgender community, I figured out what this, excuse me, I figured out what the transgender push is. I got it. Here's what it is. Okay, go with me, you guys. This is an eclipse. <laughs> <coughs> this is an eclipse, so I've lost my mind. Okay, yes, because it's familiar sexual abuse trauma. That's exactly right. Why would you let a man hit you? Because you were beaten in your childhood. That's why. Stop pretending you weren't. And to the parents that go, I don't know what happened in their childhood. 
Go fuck yourself. You know exactly what happened to your kid and you're too much of a coward to take responsibility even now. Even now. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. No, it's not hate for gays. I'm saying I figured out the trans... Gays are not transgender. Not, not every gay man. Go to go to Palm Springs. There, there are gay men and women there and they're not all transgender. That Dylan is an actor. He's full of shit. How do you get so many contracts like that? Come on. Okay, but I wanted to know what the push in this time frame is. Okay, what the push is for everybody to be transgender. Why do they want to transgender your children? Like two-year-olds, four-year-olds, put them on hormones? Why, 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 why? Okay, Orson Welles, 1984, read that. But here's the thing. What if they have to make transgenderism, I guess, and uh, what is it, um, gender dysphoria normal? Now, just think. Why would that become normal? It used to be not, I don't want to say normal, but it used to just be a rarity, right? So it was a rarity. Orson Welles, yeah. George Orwell, <laughs> thank you. I'm like Orson Welles, George. See, now my memory's not so good. So why, ask yourself, why do we have to think that changing one's gender, removing one's penis, or pretending to be a woman, or living as a woman, I guess, and that's not a problem and changing hormones. Why? What if, what if we have a presidential candidate coming up into power who is exactly that transgender? Do y'all know who I'm talking about? She's a girl now, but she was born a boy. What if that person is going to run for office, right? To be the first female president, but actually that yes, yes, Teresa, they will find out that that person was born genetically a male. Now, if that person were born a male, maybe nobody would vote for this person if it was still taboo to be transgender, right? So they have to make it mainstream. I'm using the word mainstream, just like they did with weed. Now, every kid that you know, including your grandkids, they're all smoking weed like it's normal. And it's not the normal weed from the 60s. This shit is piled up with crap. So if they have to run a female, because of course this world will never let a real woman be president. And what I mean by real, don't take fucking offense, a woman with a uterus who gets her period and has a vagina. Not a man-made vagina, but a God-given vagina. Okay? They'll never have a woman run for office. Never, never, never. Not a, not a genetic nature, biological female. They will never, unwell, Michael, Michelle, Clark, that's hilarious, right? Unwell, they will never, they will never. Woman of health in Los Angeles was that man with the gray hair that looks like he's not healthy. That guy, they, they mock women. So they will never have a real woman speak up for anything. They will squash, annihilate, ruin, torture, that's what they will do before they will ever let somebody who is biologically female run. They mock us all the time. Barbara Bush, just go back and look at, just go back and look at that. So what if they have to make it where no one bats an eye so they can win the vote? What if they have to push this so much and make it look like there's so much transgendering happening, which there really shouldn't be that much, because you're either born male or female, and yes, you can be born in a wrong body. That actually karmically happens, and there is nothing wrong with wanting to live your life however you want to live it. However, because that goes into society, like who made the rules? Like a woman does this, a man does this. Why is this even, like under whose consciousness, under whose authority did they, do? I know they're trying to get rid of women, which they will do. I'll be dead. Michael is above. <laughs> Look at Sarah Jessica Parker and... Michelle Obama together and then you'll know. So they're pushing an agenda, which, uh, and I, it has nothing to do with being gay because as I said, Palm Springs is full of gay people and they're all the time and they're not transgendered. I mean, there are transgenders, yes, but not everybody is that. They're just gay. Like they just want to be gay. And there's, whatever you are is not what I'm talking about. Why suddenly are they pushing this? 
they are suddenly pushing this so they can run a candidate that is exactly that so that we don't bat an eye and we vote for this person. That is what I think they're doing because I couldn't understand it. I mean, nobody wants to cut off body parts. Like if a woman has a mastectomy, it's very devastating to them, right? So are you telling me a woman to change her gender just wants to cut off her breasts and you allow them to do this when they're 15, 16, 17? They don't even know what they fucking want. Yes, I know. Emulate Baphomet. Exactly. I know what they're doing. Right. And eventually they will stop procreation and they'll be able to AI us through um, uh, cloning. So that's what, yes, I heard of that kid, Jazz. And I, you can't, okay, I'm just saying this. When I took the pill, I was 14. I took it for one month. <laughs> that's it. Because immediately I felt wacko on it. So I never took birth control again. I just, I wasn't going to take it. It just, I just knew not to take it. I don't want to feel that way. So it's fine if you are transgender. That's not even what I'm talking about. But what is the push? Because it used to be like if you shot up heroin, it wasn't like a good thing. You would be looked bad upon, right? But they push that now. They push drugs, debauchery. They push the confusion with the gender. So now everybody thinks they got to be confused with their gender. They do all kinds of things like that. But why? Why, why, why? Jazz is probably messed up from the hormones that she took in order to become a she. She's probably messed up from that. Or was she a she and went to a he? I don't know. I, I just remember the name was that. It is a spiritual battle. But what if you want a candidate to run you have to you have to make the public think that that candidate is normal like everybody else if you can admit you're transgender or not until yeah of course there are there are really i knew a person growing up that was really transgendered i mean the first experience i had i was like 12 and i met this person a man and he didn't like put breasts in or anything but he dressed, lived as a woman now there's differences that I don't understand there's um cross-dressing versus living as a woman versus transitioning from one to the other but I'm just gonna ask you this this is just my opinion I love orgasms right so why are you going to change your body why are you gonna do that cut your penis off when you can never have an orgasm again in your life, but you can wear high heels and men will fuck you, but you will get no pleasure out of it. What is that? Like, what is that? What is that? You will not have another orgasm in your life. So I'm confused. So I'm gonna keep my penis if I'm a man, and put my boobs in and wear a skirt and you're just going to have to work around it because I am not giving up my orgasms. Like you're going to mutilate your self-sabotage. I know you're going to mutilate yourself to be feminine in order to attract men because that's what you want to do, which I totally get. But you're going to transition because they can never fix the nerves. And by the way, I, ha I know I talked to a couple of my friends that did the transition so anyway, I've, you know, they make whatever I have been told. I don't know because I never had sex with them and I don't have a penis, but I've been told that when you have sex with them, okay, so the back is here. And so they have the vagina put where their penis was, which is where our vaginas are, whatever it's flipped around and they hit the, you know, they go in the vagina to have sex. It hits the back of the bone and it doesn't, it's not flexible because we women are flexible, right? It's a muscle down there. So we move with the penis. That's what we're supposed to do for procreation. Like, but yeah, no kids should be making any kind of a decision about cutting off their breasts or their penis or even using hormones in the middle of puberty. Are you kidding me? It's bad enough that women, let's see, I don't blame young men. 
Yeah, no, I blame society and the media, but why are they doing it? Why? What's the investment? Because people with children in the real world, people with children do not necessarily want their kids cutting off their body parts. So like if your child comes to you and says, I'm going to cut my breasts off, um, what, like, no, no, you're not. No, you're not. I know it's to offend God. I know what it is. I know, I know exactly what it's for. But this eclipse right now is very, uh, yeah, what kind of doctor does that? But, but see, here's the thing. Regardless, why is the government giving away, like in Los Angeles, free care and hormones if you want to transition? But yet, I can't get free birth control should I want to get birth control. Just asking. I'm just fucking asking. Just asking. Don't know. So, yeah, it's very weird. It's very, very weird. Thank you, Bethany. Thank you. They want to make, yes, they do want to make you unable to procreate. Which, like in 1984, they were removing the orgasm, remain, removing the procreation elements. They're removing all of that. Think about that for a second. Yeah, think about it. And if you transition from a man to a woman, you have to have a dilator in your in your. Of course, they. Of course, that jazz is three hundred pounds. Hormones. Ladies, when you get pregnant, can you stop the weight gain? If you have poly ovary, polycystic ovaries, can you stop the weight gain? If you have um, a thyroid issue, you gain you gain weight like crazy. So you, what, you're going to pump your body full of a bunch of hormones till you're blowing out your own hormonal thing and it's all whacked? No, 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 no. Terrible. Just Terrible. Yeah, oh, damn estrogen. Yes, you take estrogen. I wouldn't. I don't take hormone replacement now that I'm in menopause. I don't. I just don't. I may shrivel up like a fucking prune, but I ain't taking any of that. You're not putting weight on me. <laughs> You're not putting weight on me. I will not feel like that. I am not doing that. So I handle it with acupuncture and exercise and other things. It is evil. It really is. Thank you for that. It is. It is evil. To do that, you Hashimoto's disease, exactly. It isn't right to do that. It's not right. So that's the problem. But the real reason is they want to run a woman that was formerly a man, which is her choice and it's common knowledge. But, but that's what they want to do. So this, this 29 degrees. New moon, 2950, with the eclipse season coming up is another level of energy. Now, are we going to go with them or are we going to fight them or are we going to drop back and do nothing? What are we going to do? What are we going to do about this as people, you know? What are we going to do? Let's see. I can't even read that. Um, that's what I think they're doing. They're making it too mainstream. They, listen, they have a problem with everybody on planet Earth. They have such a problem with everybody on planet Earth, okay? They mock everybody. They call all kinds of people crazy. They do all kinds of things. But they're pushing one agenda. Why that one agenda? So forget what it's about. Just ask yourself, what is their motivation behind it? What is their motivation? Their motivation is to run a woman who was formerly a man. That's their motivation. That's what they're trying to do. That's what they want to do. That's what they want to do. Yeah, I heard. Oh, my God. You guys. Ooh. Um, divide and conquer. Yeah, I heard. I don't think Robert Kennedy. I mean, he may run, but I don't feel he's going to get in. I do feel it's, quote, a woman. And there will be some candidates we don't know about. But... I, I, who benefits? It's a satanic thing. We're in a spiritual war. It has nothing to do with this earth because nothing to do with this planet is relevant because we spend 50, 60 years here and we're dead. Or if you're like my son, you spend 24 years here and you're dead. So none of this shit here 
really fucking matters one iota. This is bullshit. And we have given the government way too much power. We shouldn't even be voting for these people. And they're spiritually and morally bankrupt. They're bankrupt. I mean, big time. What do you think child trafficking is about? What, they found an eight-year-old girl at the border, separated from her parents, okay? Eight-year-old Mexican girl come across the border with 67 different DNAs in her little girl body. So ask yourself, I'm craving garlic bread too. Ask yourself, I know they're not even human. I know you can't even say that because people are like, you're crazy. Ask yourself why our borders are open and why an eight-year-old girl would have 67 different DNA samples in her physical body. And so traumatized, she couldn't speak. So what adult men, and it's adult men, are touching that little girl and they think that that's okay. Now, me and Lori, Libra Lori, we watched this um, guy near Arizona where they have the rape trees out there and they just tie them up to the tree and people go by and they rape them. And nobody talks about this, but they are doing it all throughout this country. They are bringing them back across the board. Why would you have your border open? Why should any little girl have to be that? And by the way, obviously it's not all men, but if there's a barbarian out there, it's going to be men because that's how they found the DNA in her. It was no women's DNA in her. It was men's. So there's a problem. There is a problem, okay? A huge problem. And so we leave the borders open. We allow children to cross and nobody's doing anything. Nobody's doing anything. They're not doing anything. You think the border should be? Then open every border across the world. Open every fucking border and let me go where I want to go. Okay? Don't make a border then. But see, something else is going on. So there's that. Yeah, I heard there's three different... I know the earth needs a, it needs a good earthquake or a good sinkhole or something. Yeah, I hope, well, pray for her. I hope someone can help her. It's just, it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It is one sick plant. Hey, I'm preaching to the choir over here. Preaching to the choir. Preaching. Double standard. I know. But why would an eight-year-old girl have to endure that? And then somebody's going to say in the new age community, and I quote, we're here to learn lessons. Could you please tell me the lesson that that little girl's learning? I want to know the lesson. I would like to know the lesson that that little girl's learning. Can you tell me? Can you please tell me? Because the new age community is full of shit. We have been hijacked here. I used to say we picked our lives. I do think we do to a certain degree, but our frame of reference from what we're picking, I don't think we're told the truth. So there's no way a little girl soul is going to come down here and go, yeah, I think I'm going to be raped by 67 different fucking men while I'm trying to escape the cartel in Mexico because I'm going to learn a lesson, I can't imagine what lesson that is. So when we say shit like that, we need to understand there is no lesson in that. So there is no lesson in that. She'll probably, of course, she'll go into the system. She'll be kidnapped and probably dead in a year. That's exactly right. I mean, that's exactly right. You're exactly right. Look at what Toby Willis did. I don't know who that is. So this is just not what they tell us in the new age is airy fairy crap and it's not true. There are reasons and lessons we learn, but this whole energy vibration has been twisted. So somehow they've inverted the energy on this planet because we're not supposed to be living like this. And I can pretty much tell you that. Again, an eight-year-old girl. So yeah. Oh, well, it's it's you know what's wrong with people? The sex industry, pornography. Her parents are dead. Her parents were killed. You're exactly right, Damien. You're exactly right. They found the parents and the parents were killed. They found one other female relative, but the father was killed. Some, and I'm not sure if the mother was killed. They may have found the mother. But the, a bunch of the family, what? Organ harvesting. Exactly. All, I mean, it's just... And people think, oh, that only happens in China. No, it happens in America. Everything is happening right here. <laughs> it's happening right here. Um, and for all, all we know, uh, where are the breaks? No, there's no breaks. The government enjoys this. 
your government that you pay for, that I pay for, that we all pay for, right? The government enjoys telling us what to do. The government thinks they can tell us what to put in our bodies. The government thinks they have control over everything. The government needs to be eradicated because they are evil. Who are these people? Under whose authority were we born into a circumstance that we believe to be free choice, which has no free choice? We don't have any free choice. You will never be secure on this planet. You will never, you will be fucked over by your family, by your friends, by people who believe money is their God. They're so dumb, they don't even know the money's not real. They can come and take your house. They can, they can do, I, I just, you know. I, well, I think in order to get rid of the government, the people actually have to storm all of the government buildings and stand up across the country and not vote for these people and throw them the fuck out. Like literally, stop voting. Do not vote because you're not voting. It's a selection. You're not voting. So don't vote. But everybody goes, well, I've heard this. I voted for Biden because I hated Trump. Are you an idiot? Are you dumb? So you're going to vote for somebody that talks like that one because you don't like that one. And you are that's what you're doing with your fucking power? What's wrong with you, you moron? And some people are like, well, <sighs> They voted for the gas tax because they don't drive much. What? They already have enough tax money. Never say yes to a tax for any reason. The government, I know, I know. No, nobody tried January 6th. Please. Oh my God. Okay. I just, first of all, a guy with horns on his head wearing a loincloth getting into the White House or the whatever building, wherever it was, the building, that is planned, okay? Because I want you to try. I'm talking every single citizen in every single house, stand outside your house and literally say, we are not voting for you. Nobody show up at the polls. Nobody go out. Don't do it. You are not getting your point across because they're all the same and it's not good. So I'm not talking about running into the Capitol building with a loincloth on your hoochie and horns on your head and people going, oh my God, look what happened. You open the door for those people. There's no way they scaled the fence, ran across with the shotguns and the people around the, the, the government buildings. You can't even get into a government building ever without them going through your purse and checking if you have a gun and taking your belt off. I've been told in the courthouse I have to take my boots off because they had little spikes on the back. Little little diamond pyramid, not pyramids, but they were that shape on the back of my heel. That was actually said to me in Van Nuys, ghetto hellhole of Los Angeles. That was said to me. So don't tell me they're fucking running into the Capitol building. Oh my God, look what happened. Nothing happened. It's a joke. It's a joke, you all, and y'all believe it. That's the worst thing that ever happened. No, the worst thing that ever happened is probably Vietnam, any war, 9-11, all planned by the same government. I, I can't understand why people, I, I just can't, I, I mentally can't, I, I mentally can't handle it. I can't handle it. Like, I feel like I don't understand how people can't know that. Bill Clinton, and I don't like the man, but Bill, I don't know him, but Bill Clinton in 90, 91 said there was a plot to blow up the Twin Towers. In 1991, they foiled a plan. They knew this was happening. That little weasel, George Bush, the dumb one, and he is dumb as a fucking brick. Do you ever question... Does anybody ever question why Bush Sr. and then we have to deal with Bush Jr.? Why? How is that government as opposed to nepotism? Why is it every celebrity I have to watch their fucking kids? Who are their kids? Get off. Get away from me. I don't want to see you. They're in the same club. That's why. That is why. But little Bush had a little fucking happy smile on his face, little bitch. No, I good. You never voted. I never will either. Good for you. Clinton talked about it. Clinton literally said they're going to try to do this. So for some reason, when Clinton was first elected, 
He literally understood that they wanted to take those buildings down. Now, second to it, second to it, are you fucking telling me an airplane from an airport with, now this was the best line, and I carried box cutters on me for years when I hiked in the dark, and my quote was, if you can take down a jumbo jet with a bunch of box cutters, then it should be good enough to kill a cougar on the trail. Are you telling me five weirdo men in a plane literally <laughs> pulled out some box cutters and took the plane over? Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Sure. Uh-huh. Mm-mm. -uh. They lit those buildings on fire. They set it up. They may have set a plane into the building. They did it. I mean, obviously people saw it, but it was planned. I don't care. I don't care what you say to me. Call me crazy. I never believed it. And I don't believe Aaron Carter's autopsy. I believe it's in his body, but I don't believe it happened the way that they said it happened. So thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, Project Blue Bleep. Blue, bleh, blue beam, exactly. It It's unbelievable. And, and by the way, every single politician, George Bush, Clinton, Clinton's wife, Clinton's daughter, the queen, her dumbass son, what's his name over in Israel? All of them get out of their physical bodies and they're on the astral. They've already planned this shit a year, about a year ahead of the time that it happens to us. That's why psychics can pick up on it because it's already being done. It's be, they work on the astral level. We can't get out of here because they gridded the entire fucking planet. So it has a lot to do with that. That's the problem. We don't believe it. We believe what we see. We believe what we think. We believe what we're told. We are born into families where our parents go, it's really important to go to college. I never told my kids that. I said, don't pay for college. I'm not paying for your college. Don't pay for college unless you have a very specific career. I did enjoy them graduating from high school, but the reason that they want you in high school and college is to indoctrinate you and to tell you to become a slave. Oh, you'll work for a company. I don't want to work for a company. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do what someone else tells. I'm not here to do that. I'm not here to do what the government says, drive an electric car while they raise the price of electricity. I'm going to say this again. To dispose of batteries, just so we're very clear, the batteries, the lithium batteries have to go to a smelter, okay? Smelter is responsible for acid rain and all kinds of things. <laughs> So you're doing way more work with a battery in a car than you ever dreamt of with the clean fuel of gas that is natural. I'm just saying, like, duh, I can't, I just can't. I'll have a nervous breakdown. Anyway, yeah, the child labor and the smelters, which pour acid rain and give people cancer. And then they raise the electricity. They are not going to not get their money. That's why the government needs to be ignored and people need to do what they want to do. Don't let, I'm not, I, I've said it all week. I am not here to live the way the government wants me to. I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm not going to not work. I'm not going to not hug my family in a holiday. I'm not going to hug anybody even if they, if I want to hug them, I'm going to hug them. Whether they have COVID or not. I do not care. People need to stop. Do not fall for what they're saying. Do not. Yeah. What is the tower card? Well, it's a tower. It's a burning tower, obviously. Um, it's a plutonium. I know. I know, right? Lithium batteries. Everybody around here drives Teslas. It's hilarious. I'm like, y'all are stupid with too much money. <laughs> I know, Aaron Carter, what they're saying. I did the video on it. I listened to another psychic on TikTok. I'm like, why are you saying this? She's like, I talked to the spirit. I'm not disputing any of that. I will not argue about that. She said the family called her and Aaron's crossed over, which I believe he's okay in, as that as well. I don't believe he's earthbound. I believe he can come to the earth. But hi, Bobby. Um, but... I don't believe he talked to the, this psychic and said that, you know, he was 
actively using drugs and shit. Again, if you give them an Ativan and you knock his ass out, right? Or you give him some wine and Ativan or whatever, you can put a mask over his face. And why the fuck was he in the bathtub? You just, I mean, how dumb do people think we are? They just think we're stupid. They just think we're stupid. I can take it no more. Um, I know Bobby just got here. <laughs> I've been on a rant for hours. Um, but yeah, the auto no, the autopsy doesn't make sense. They're, they're shaming him in his death. They're shaming him. So, and then there's psychics out there saying, yeah, that's how he died. And the family's agreeing. I don't believe it. I'm not, no, no, because before he died, I picked up on the fact he was going to die. I named the time frame before he died. So if I can pick up on that, there's intention behind the scenes. Period. Wear a mask, but open borders. Yeah, wear a mask and let a little girl get raped 67 times. They're ridiculous. They're ridiculous. Uh, I know they hang people and drown them and they make up the drug story. Somehow, as a little kid, I knew the government wanted everybody on drugs so they can blame you. Remember, they blame shift. If you are an addict, you will get blamed for everything. Don't let them do it. Stand in your power. It's an energy thing. People think that the world is literal, like it's literally this and literally that. It isn't. There's nothing literally about it, okay? Nothing literally. Any, everything you see here is garbage bullshit. And because you've gone through the indoctrination camps, <laughs> i.e. you vote, you go to school. Don't you love those people? I voted. <laughs> Oh, good for you. Yeah, fabulous. Awesome. <laughs> Did you vote for George Bush or Orange Man Bad or Diaper Man in office now? Which one of these idiots did you vote for? I mean, what? <sighs> they want the cars gone. No, Anthony Bourdain. I did a video on him. That was murder. He was shocked with an animal prod. No, no, no. I don't know. Who's Brandon B? Wait, I'm so confused. Who's Brandon B? Brandon Lee? I just did a video. Brandon B? I don't know who Brandon B is. Anyway, no. Anthony Bourdain was six foot five. The door handle was under five feet tall. How the fuck did he hang himself? Are you telling me he just went like this and went with it? <laughs> and just hit the floor? He wouldn't. That's just so stupid. He might not be dead. He might not be dead. You're right about that. A lot of them just go out and then they just play other parts and they think we're so stupid. They think, and, and by the way, they hold their consciousness. So you're right about the not being dead. They will hold people's consciousness in suspension so that they can't go on and then they recycle them back here. You are right about that. It's a whole, whole thing. It's a whole thing. Yes, nuclear energy. He's on his island. Probably he is. I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. All right, you guys, remember, I've got to go because I'm getting allergies again because I ate milk products. My thing is yogurt. I must stop. Okay, so 29 degrees and 50 seconds, Aries, new moon, squaring Pluto. So watch your emotional nature with a wide conjunction to Jupiter, which means more emotional expansiveness with... The sun going into Taurus, Uranus in Taurus, and Mercury retrograde on the 21st, the day after the sun goes into Taurus, going retrograde at 15 degrees of Taurus. So the people that got to watch it for the next six months, Cancer, Capricorn, Aries, and Libra. And then in Mercury retrograde, look to see where Taurus is in your chart, 15 degrees, and that's where the conversation, communication, fuck up will be. Probably a financial thing because it is Taurus or a property or structural thing because of that. All right, you guys. I think I just went on a rant from hell. <laughs> I apologize. I can't apologize anymore. It's just me. Okay, you guys. No, Kate Spade. I just can't. I just can't. I just can't. <laughs> I just can't. I just I can't with this planet. It's insanity. Um, it's a good joke. This planet is a fucking joke. Like, it's a huge joke. Oh, you got to live a good life. You can't live a good life here because they will take it from you and they will tell you lies. So inevitably, you're living in a crazy farm. We're in, you know what? We're in a crazy farm, crazy hospital farm. 
This is what Earth is, where the crazy people are sent. So we probably went into court in another galaxy, and they said, you know what? You guys are crazy, <laughs> and they sent us to Earth. That's what happened. Figured that out. Also, remember, if Michelle Obama runs, that is the reason for the push of the transgenderism. Remember that. Thank you for that. Thank you so much, Francis Farmer. Exactly. We're all living her life. Some of us are being lobotomized. Some of us are being lobotomized by what we're, we are stuck in a loop. There's no way that this is normal. There's no way that <laughs> this is normal. No way. No way. All right, you guys. Happy eclipse. Happy eclipse. Okay. New moon eclipse. 912 tonight on this west coast and 1212 on the 20th on the east coast the new moon the lunar eclipse energy and the square to pluto and the conjunction to jupiter energy for the next like we'll say week no surgeries in the next five days no surgeries five days before five days after peace out y'all i love you guys dearly He's going to buy me some salmon, damn it. <laughs> He's going to buy me some fucking salmon. Okay, bye, you guys. Oh, eclipse madness. Okay, bye. Bye, guys.